All right, so what we saw with the stopwatch technique is if things start to decay too rapidly, we're not going to be able to see um, what's going on. So we need a faster way uh, to see this. And to do that, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the oscilloscope and the function generator. We will learn a lot more later. So for right now, uh, I'll just teach you the basics that we need to know for this experiment. Again, we will learn more about this later. So what we can see right now is this function generator is doing a sine wave output that's oscillating back and forth. And if you see on the screen, I don't know if you can see these numbers, it's a 5 volt peak to peak. So it's 5 volts from the bottom to the top. Notice the minimum voltage is about negative 2.5 and the maximum voltage is about positive 2.5. This is very different than our power supply that was going on and off from uh, 0 volts to 2 volts. So let's look at how we can make this more like that power supply first. So what I'm going to do, uh, actually if you could look over here, I'm going to change this to a square wave. And now we see it's basically turning on and off between negative 2.5 and positive 2.5. Right? It changed a little bit so I'm going to tweak this just a hair there. close enough. So again, it's going from negative 2.5 up to 2.5. This button right here is called DC offset. When I press this, right now there shouldn't be any DC offset, but this activates this button right here. And now, I'm going to lower this uh, amplitude a little bit. So on the screen, take a look at this square wave again. Now all I did was I changed the zoom on the screen, so notice it's going, still going from negative 2.5 to positive 2.5. All right, and each box on the screen vertically is two division, uh, two volts per division vertically. So two volts, four volts. We see this is about two point five. Horizontally, the divisions are ten point zero milliseconds. So we see that this takes approximately ten, about uh, a little less than twenty milliseconds to complete an on-off cycle. All right, and now let's go back over to here. I've engaged this DC offset. I'm going to turn this knob, and Angus is going to let you watch the screen. And again, watch what happens to the min and max. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I'll let him get in there. I'll let it get focused. Here we go. So I'm adjusting the DC offset. You can see as I adjust it up, look what's happening to the minimum and the max. The peak-to-peak -peak value is approximately constant, but the minimum is going up. And now we're going to run into some trouble with triggering. You don't need to know what I mean there. And while this isn't exactly perfect, now it's going from 80 millivolts, negative 80 millivolts, up to about 5. So you can see if I can just try one more time. It's very sensitive. So it's going approximately from 0 volts up to 5 volts now, oscillating up and down. So this is now very similar to our power supply and switch. We can turn it on to 5 volts, then off. On to 5 volts, then off. Now let's go look at the board. Uh, and, oh, before I forget... The frequency and the period, I apologize for being all over here. It's been a long day. So look on the screen behind me here. Uh, this is the frequency. We're at about 61 hertz. To get the period, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's just one over the frequency. So the period, and then these, I've just converted into more common units. So uh, later on, we're going to be using kilohertz. Uh, so um, this is 0 0.61 kilohertz. And the period is going to be in milliseconds, so about 16.4 milliseconds. So that's the period we have in this waveform uh, and frequency in various units. Now let's go look at the board. When we first did this with the stopwatch, we had a 2 volts uh, uh, power supply and we had a switch that would open and close. And then we put the capacitor and the resistor in parallel. And then if you recall, we had a DMM and we measured the voltage across the resistor. Now, when we open up the switch, that's effectively like taking this out of the circuit. When you do that, I want to point out, when you've opened the switch, even though it maybe it looked like these were in parallel, yeah, they're in parallel, but they're also in series. So we have an RC uh, loop with the R and the C in series with each other. Again, this DMM is measuring the voltage. The resistance of this device is so huge it does not contribute, neg it contributes a negligible amount to the, uh, it causes a negligible effect on the circuit. Sorry about that. Now let's go over here 
and this is with the scope. So if we want to do this measurement, sorry that W looks crappy. If we're going to do this measurement with the scope, it looks a little bit different. Now we're oscillating between 0 volts and 5 volts with this square wave. That's what we just set up. So now we see we actually have the same circuit, even though it's going to look a little bit different. The resistor and capacitor are in series with each other. But again, when this is off, when it goes to zero, we see this loop and that loop look exactly the same. I do want to point out one difference. Now we're going to be measuring the voltage across the capacitor. And you might be saying, should that be different? Well, this is because of grounding issues, and we'll learn more about that at another time. But for now, basically, we know that measuring the voltage across the capacitor in this circuit is the same as measuring this voltage, because look, this voltage is the voltage across the capacitor. Now let's go and show you what this looks like and get you onto the lab. Alright, so trying to set this up, what I'm doing, here's the function generator. So this is like the positive lead of the function generator and this is the ground of the function generator. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the voltage across this capacitor. So this is like the common port of the DMM and this is like the red uh, voltage measurement terminal of the DMM. So when I put that in there, you can see this on the screen. And to make this more visible, I can do two things. I can zoom in. I'm not changing the signal at all. I'm just changing how it appears on the screen. I'm going to make this bigger vertically. And now most of your labs are going to look like this, where now what I've done is I've changed this line, not the middle of the screen. This line is now zero volts. Notice the minimum is still zero. So now it's zero volts, one volt, two volt, three volt, four volt, five volt. And if I adjust this horizontally, you can start to see what that capacitor is doing. Here we see the capacitor is charging up, and then uh, here it was discharging. And so if I could, I'm just going to move this around a little bit so you can see that more clearly. Most of these videos I start right here. So I'm going to make this time equals zero, and again you can count the time. This would be one division of 2.5 milliseconds two divisions of 2.5 milliseconds, three, etc. And again, the period for this experiment was about uh, 16 milliseconds. The period includes the time to discharge and charge once. So we see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six and a half of these at 2.5 is approximately 16 uh, milliseconds, which corresponds to the screen. All right, you're ready for lab.